is a good idea to give your circuit a few sharp taps on the table in case there's loose bits of wire floating around here anyway. What you'll see is the optocoupler circuitry is in white and black more or less so perhaps we can wire up the motors um, with the pink wires which is a heavier thicker wire that will carry more current. Going back to our drawings you'll notice this is the positive side of the top of the bridge there and you'll notice that this is the negative side of the bottom of the bridge effectively so what we must remember is this is the view from top and if we do the old flipping over trick again notice how the positive is now at the bottom and the negative is at the top just like it'll be when you physically flip the circuit over to wire up the last wiring connections So here we have the physical drawing, which is quite nice. Remember these things take time to produce, but it's a nice record to have if you give your last circuit away to a friend in need. You've got the drawing and it's easier to build a circuit off a drawing like this than off a circuit diagram or a photograph. Um, drawings like this are incredibly clear and convey only the information you need. So remember the positive line is now moved to the bottom because you flip the circuit through the vertical and here you'll see the negative is across the top this is effectively where we're going to be connecting a chunky battery to power the whole thing now if we look at the actual circuit you see here's the motor here are the diodes pointing the other way again and notice the drain which is the heat sink or the body of the device or the middle pin notice they all run through to the motor so it's draining through to the motor in whichever direction then the sources of the P and the N channel MOSFETs are connected to the negative and the positive respectively and notice the gates are connected to these transistors which are part of our opto isolator data circuit from the NXT brick so all we really need to do now is to hook up these various points and in this area here we want to use thicker wire to carry the current to the motor and along here but for the gates we can use a lighter grade of wire so what I've typically done here is I've kept these wires quite short and I've made sure I've got very good joins and I've got no short circuits because that's carrying the major current through this device at this stage I'm going to put the chunky 330 ohm resistors onto the board what you'll see is the circuit has gotten a little bit busier than it was earlier. We're just finishing up these connections here. Now before we connect the circuit up to the NXT brick we want to connect it up to a power source. Just look at it see if there's any flames or smoke or excessive heat. If it checks out okay from that point of view then we'll connect it to the brick and connect it to a motor and see if it works. I just spotted one missing wire that's hopefully the last wire that we need in here basically from there down to positive which is over there
That should do the job. Right, take two. Now, we've checked everything over. We connect up the motor and let's start it up. And here's a moment of truth. Let's see what this machine can do. Here's our motor. We run the program and bingo, there you go. You can see the motor's jumping every time it changes direction. You'll hear when the motor's running slow, makes a whistling noise. So there you go. Here we have our educational H bridge running a motor using a Lego NXT to supply the logic and a cell phone type battery to power this whole effort. It's a 11.9 volt LiPo battery. Just about blew myself up with this thing one time. <laughs> 